Hey guys, we're back on the uh, CJ5 snowblower Jeep. Uh, I want to go over a few things about the engine I guess I missed yesterday. Got a lot of questions on this. Uh, what I did this morning was fire it up again. Uh, adjusted the carburetor uh, as close as I'm going to get it right now without the air cleaner on. Uh, set the idle again. And right now, um, I think you can probably hear the oil draining out of there. We're draining the oil right now. You can see it coming out. Uh, that's the break-in oil. That's coming out right now. We have, oh, exactly one hour of run time on this engine. And we're dumping the break-in oil. And we're going to put the, the new oil in there. Uh, I'm going to change the filter out and everything. But we're going to let that drain for a while, make sure we get every last little bit of that break-in oil out of there. i uh, got a lot of questions about uh, when I pressure lube this, um, where, where the uh, where the line went to and I uh, hope you can see this okay there's the fitting right on the block and that is where uh, on this particular CJ5 an oil sending unit went and then there was an electrical gauge um, I'm gonna put a mechanical gauge in there but uh, that's where the line went to just above that is the line that brings oil to um, the cylinder head. So the fitting just below that is where I pressure lube the block and that will just back feed everything and uh, that'll put oil to every you know the whole entire oil gallery um, every passage will get oil and everything and we put all five quarts in like that everything went through that particular port um, and uh, you know, as soon as we started up, we had oil pressure. Uh, I thought I covered that pretty good, but uh, for, for the guys that were wondering, um, that's the port that I lubed the engine with. And um, it works it works very good. You know, the whole entire engine's lubed before you fire it up. Um, and then I got a lot of questions about um, how fast it fired up. And you were actually looking at that in real time. Uh, there was no tricks or trick photography or anything like that. That's real time how I fired this up. And uh, let's go around to the other side and uh, I'll show you a few pointers on how to get them to fire up like that. Okay, here we are over on the uh, distributor side of the motor. And uh, when I fire up a new engine, I put the, uh, I put the engine on top dead center. Uh, and one of these videos I'll make on uh, on the distributor and the oil pump relationship and everything. But on every factory Willys, number one was always down here. Um, the oil pump has to go in a certain way for the distributor to, to engage in it. And number one always winds up being right down here. Um, you know, I get vehicles in here all the time where number one is just anywhere because guys just put the oil pump in any which way. But there's a certain way to put the oil pump in. Your distributor number one is going to be down here. And then your uh, counterclockwise, you go one, three, four, and two. Um, so on number one, your rotor is going to be pointing, you know, right down here. So take the cap off, figure out where number one is, and twist your distributor so you're dead in line with the number one. And it's going to put you very, very close to starting. Um, you could advance it just a little bit to give you the five before. But um, one of the most critical things for uh, fast you know, starting is having your distributor in the exact right place. So take your time, get that figured out real good. Put it kind of close to where you think it should be. You know, after you do a bunch of them, you get a good feel for where the distributor should be in relation to the rotor, and, and you'll hit it, you know, exactly every time. Uh, another thing I got going for the fast startup is I have a Petronix module in there, and I have a Petronix coil on there. It gives a real hot spark. Um, they're super reliable. Uh, the points you get these days, the condensers, they're all, they're terrible. You know, I've, I've put condensers in, in uh, distributors for people. And sometimes they don't even make it out of the driveway. So, I use Petronix when I can on a lot of things. It's just a whole lot easier. And it makes for super fast startup. 
So you know you got a good spark, you know your distributor's in the right place. Uh, next thing is I just take a tiny, I got a little eyedropper, and I prime the carburetor with just a, a, just a little bit of fuel. Uh, so we got a good charge there. Uh, and you saw, uh, you know, you hit that starter button, and um, you saw how fast it fired up. And then I did have to tweak the distributor just a tiny bit to give me the, uh, the five degrees before, but um, that wasn't bad. Uh, adjust your carburetor uh, to give you a little bit on the rich side. Well, when you're first breaking in your engine, you don't want to be washing the cylinders down with any extra fuel. Uh, try not to use the choke when you fire it up. Um, you know, that's just going to take fuel and it's going to it basically just wash the cylinders down. So do not use the choke or use it minimally till it gets started then get the choke right off there and uh, and that'll help you out without you know so you're not diluting the oil or anything and um, and that's all there is to it um, you know uh, the more time you spend with these and the more you start them up and, and play with them and stuff the you know the easier things are gonna be and and there's always days where things go bad and you know motors don't start up like they should but for the most part if you take your time uh, and get everything set up very carefully. Uh, the more precise you are in your cold setups, your static setup of the distributor, um, it, it's going to go a long way to starting right up. So, again, that was real time. You saw how fast it starts up. I came in this morning. Uh, I fired it up exactly the same way. And um, I ran it for another half hour, and we're draining the oil. So... We're going to let that drain for a while, and I'll show you something else that I got that we're going to put on here, uh, I think, today. And uh, we'll keep moving on this project. And this one I can guarantee we're actually going to finish, because I don't have a customer, you know, telling me what to do and how much to spend and how much time things are going to take and this and that and the other thing. So this one's actually going to get finished, so we're going to keep jamming on it. Um... You can see the drivetrain's coming along nice. Those are those dry shafts that I uh, and I had to fabricate. That back one's just a little shorty. And we're getting the overload in here. And we're running brake lines and real stainless steel lines with real stainless steel fittings. Not like on that last project where, you know, everything came in from various sources and stainless steel lines with steel fittings. And we're not doing any of that half-ass work on this one. We're going to... Uh, we're going to go the distance on this one, and uh, I'll show you uh, exactly how it goes together. Okay, let's head over to the bench. I'll show you something else I got. Okay, guys. Um, a lot of years ago, I can't even tell you how long ago, I, uh, I picked up a set of hubs. Uh, these are Spicer. Um, this is from uh, Spicer Powertrain Components. Uh, new old stock set and I've been waiting for a project to put these on and this is going to be the project hope you can see these okay let me try and get in on one of those uh, like I say these are new old stock and they're very easy to grab with your hand and turn them and they've got nice, uh, uh, nice look to them. Uh, it says powertrain products on there, you know, free in the lock, and, uh, and it's just a nice hub. And I've been waiting to put them on something. Uh, they're a little messed up inside from that old grease, but we'll we'll clean those up. And um, they're going to go on this project. I think you can see those. They're going to go on this project. And they didn't come with any gaskets in the package, uh, so I made some gaskets. And um, don't be afraid to make gaskets when you need to. Uh, there's a lot of junk gaskets out there. Let's see another one here. Um, this is some Garlock that I had, um, the real high performance gasket material. That's what it. That's what it looks like. It's a blue color. Um, and that'll, that'll hold up to anything, you know. Um, you can buy gaskets for these. Uh, there's a bunch of guys that sell them, and 
Uh, they're just that uh, vegetable fiber paper and and they're very flimsy and they don't hang in too good and, and I don't really like them so I made a couple gaskets this morning we're getting ready to put those on and a lot of times you know when you buy hubs you get these little you get these little locks I hope you can see that I, I can't really tell and, and you put your bolt through there and then you take that tab and you you hammer it over the bolt uh, it's a single time use item uh, you gotta change them every time you want to service your hubs or grease them or do anything like that and uh, I don't really care for them I don't, I don't use those um, so I got some uh, I got some grade 8 bolts here and the way I like to do it show you these washers. I don't know if you guys are familiar with these or not. These are called, um, the brand name of these is Nordlock. They're made in Sweden. And it's it's two washers. And this is hard to see if you can see this. It's two washers and they've got some serrations on them and they've got some teeth. And they come glued together but they've got some teeth Open you can let me try and get you in there. We've got some teeth on them. And when you put these two together, you know, as you're tightening, they can tighten and ramp over each other, but they can't they can't actually loosen up. I know it's hard to see on the camera. I can't tell what I'm doing or if you're seeing this or not, but um, it's a very good locking system. Uh, it is super, super nice. Um, for critical applications once you tighten that down the wedges there basically that lock it are larger than the pitch of the bolt so it the bolt can't actually uh, loosen and it's a very nice way of doing things and they're reusable and it looks okay in there it doesn't stick out or anything having a hard time showing you this but yeah you can see how that's gonna work out so uh, that's that's the kind of locking um, feature I like to use when I put hubs on and um, it's much nicer than those bend over tab washers and like I say you can take them out and reuse them many times um, and they're good on on um, on head bolts, uh, if you got bolts loosening up on your head, on your exhaust system, anywhere you got a bolt that's loosening, um, these work extremely well. Uh, you just have to make sure you have a strong enough bolt, and you don't have a bolt that's going to stretch on you or anything like that. Um, a lot of guys put their hubs on with stainless steel bolts, and uh, sometimes they go bad and they loosen up and everything goes to hell. But um, I like to use a grade 8 bolt, and those washers and you won't have any trouble with your hubs so um, I'm gonna clean out some of that old grease we'll go in there and we'll lube that up with a light grease I've got some new snap rings that'll go on the axle and that's about it. We'll have the hubs on there. And um, like I say, I've been waiting a lot of years to put these on something. And I feel this is the right project for it. So uh, these are going on next. And I'll show you what they look like when they're installed. Okay, there's the hub finally installed. We've got our Nordlock washers, our grade 8 bolts, and the hub on there and it's got a nice big uh, large diameter knob there that you could just grab with your hand and turn uh, so those are on there and I think they're gonna work real nice I think they look good so that finishes up uh, the last thing I had to do on the front end and I've got to still make the brake lines for the front end I've got the brake hoses in now 
it's a little bit different brake hose remember this is a custom built Dana 44 for the front that I built and it has larger brakes on it so uh, brake lines had to be they're not special but they had to be a different length so they're on there now and I've got a little bit more work to do here uh, I've got to, I got the brake lines made for the rear I just got to uh, fasten them in there properly and then I'm going to be working on the coil spring that goes on the overload uh, to this pocket down here so I've got a little bit more chassis work to do and then we're going to go straight on to the body and get the body um, I got some grinding to do on the body and then we'll get that in some primer I'll put some epoxy primer on that first and um, I'll show you how that comes along and we'll finally get to finish painting on that um, I am still missing for this vehicle a windshield frame and some front fenders uh, so I'm either going to uh, uh, fenders look like it would be a lot of work to make but I may make a set of front fenders for this these are the shorty fenders without the uh, side marker indent and you know they're kind of tough to find and there are some reproductions out there but I looked at them and they're so bad that I won't even think of using them so I may make a set of fenders if I can't find anything anybody's got a decent set of fenders I'd be interested in them uh, otherwise uh, I'll figure something out and um, windshield frame I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing right now um, I may use a little bit later windshield frame so I can put some better wipers in there. Um, but uh, I'll show you that as it comes. But um, that's all I got for you for today. Um, I guess uh, I think I'll probably be back on the overload springs and uh, the undercarriage for the snow plow uh, next on the chassis. And I'll show you how that comes together. But um, I'll catch you on the next video. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. And um, if you like the video, hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, um, share it, you know, spread it amongst your friends. And uh, like I said, I'm always trying to make the channel better. So if you have any ideas, shoot me a comment and uh, try and get some information out there for you. Okay, catch you on the next video.